Okay, welcome back. So in our last video, we set up our Strapi CMS. And as you can see all the data here, we have uh, authors, we put in several different categories and we created uh, six different posts. So just make sure that you have that already set up and that the Strapi server is continuing to run it, uh, continuing to run because we will be querying it with our Gatsby front end in this video. So this video is going to be focusing on uh, setting up our Gatsby front end. And it's mostly going to be copying and pasting a lot of code from the tutorial blog post. And then in the next video, I'm going to go back and look at the code that we put in and try and understand how that Gatsby code is working. So let's get started here. Let's open up a new terminal window here. And what we're going to do is we're going to run this npm init Gatsby command. And now we get to see uh, what we want to call our blog. Um, we're going to call it, we're going to call it Strappy Gatsby blog site. And we're going to put this in the front end folder. We're going to use JavaScript. Uh, we will add our CMS later using a plugin. We'll add Strappy. Uh, no extra styling system and uh, no additional features for now. So we shall do this right now. Perfect. Okay, so this is installing and we're creating our front end right here with all of these wonderful files. You see they're all green because they're being added to our repo as they're untracked. Let's just wait for this to finish. And yep, we went through all of these steps. Perfect, there we are. Okay, so if we go here, we should be running. Uh, oh, so everything's been installed correctly. Now, if you notice, uh, all of those untracked files have now, uh, they were green, that's all disappeared. Well, what's going on? Why, why did that disappear? Why aren't they showing up as uh, new files for us to commit? Uh, well, the reason is, that if you go into your folder here, into the front end folder we just created, you'll see there's already a Git folder here. Uh, you'll have to enable um, you know, hidden, hidden files, but if you have that enabled, you'll see that's already there. And that's why those files no longer show up here as new, because uh, VS Code is thinking it's a separate repo, it's a new repo. I don't want to do that. I want uh, I want to treat this as one single mono repo. So I'm going to delete that extra Git folder that was in our front end here. And once we do that, might take a minute, but these files are now going to show up as new and untracked. So we'll give that a little bit of time, but let's continue on as we wait. We want to now install uh, the Gatsby source Strapi plugin. So we're going to be installing two plugins here with this command line. Um, the first plugin, uh, let me CD into my front end so that we can now install these two plugins. Uh, so the first plugin is going to allow us to connect to Strapi and grab data from it. That's good. And the second one, this transformer remark plugin is going to allow us to transform the markdown content into HTML. Okay, so that's what we're doing with that. And uh, that's exactly what it says right here. Perfect. So that has been added. And now that this is refreshed, you can see that this is all untracked. And so the front end folder is now able to be committed. So we're going to say something like install Gatsby front end, something like that. And we'll push that up. Perfect. Okay, so next we need to edit the Gatsby config uh, file here. So that is right here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to completely replace this. So delete it. And then we're going to copy and paste all this uh, text that they give us. So what did we just do? Well, 
we're expecting that there should be a .env file, right? So there's going to be some environment, uh, environmental variables that we're going to have. There should be one called strappy API URL, and that's going to be one of the options here that we're using for our plugins. So if we look here, our module exports is going to have an array of plugins, and inside this array, there are two plugins. There's the Gatsby source strappy that we just installed, and there's also the Gatsby Transformer Remark plugin, which we also just installed. Okay, so this first one, the Strapi plugin, accepts a bunch of options. Okay, and so what we just did was in this code is we define a new variable, the Strapi config, and inside we put an object inside of that with all of the options that this is able to take. So the first one is where we define the API URL. So this tells Gatsby where to fetch, where to connect to the Strapi URL, uh, the Strapi API. And then the next option here is the collection type. So here's an array of the collection types that we created, right? So author, category, and post. These are the things that we're going to be fetching and communicating with uh, from Strapi. So that's what we need. And the only thing we need to do now is actually create this uh, .env file. As you can see here, we need to create this new .env.deployment file, which we will do right here. Uh, sorry, development file. And we want to add in this variable, this strappy API URL. So we're going to add that in and save both of these. So now it should be working and it should Gatsby should be connected to um, strappy. The way we test this is we're going to actually uh, run our Gatsby. So npm run develop and let this compile briefly. Perfect. Okay, so Gatsby has finished building. And what we have here are two URLs that we can go to. Okay, so this first one is this first URL is localhost at port 8000, and it is the home page for the starter Gatsby template, right? So if we go to our source folder and we go to pages and we have this index.js, what we're going to see here is if we scroll down to the JSX, we're going to see H1, congratulations, right? you just made a Gatsby site, you just made a Gatsby site. So all of the JSX code inside of index.js becomes built into this home page, right? Uh, we're gonna wind up replacing this with our blog, uh, but that's later. Uh, more importantly, we have this URL right here. And let me just uh, delete that real fast. Okay, so this is graphical. Graphical is a GraphQL playground, just like we had with uh, the Strapi site. This is run um, using Gatsby, and it allows us to play around and create GraphQL queries. It's going to be very powerful and very useful for us to use. So let me take this off here as a new window. And let's go back here. So what we want to do is we want to play around with this. Um, on the left hand side here, there's going to be several buttons that we can access. The first one shows us some documentation. That's great. History of things we played around with. And here is the explorer. And this is really what we want to focus on. This one's a code exporter. So using the explorer, what we're able to do is we're able to create queries, right? That's what we're doing here. Uh, so we have here all strappy authors, all strappy category, all strappy posts. This is where we're able to uh, try and grab and query all strappy posts. So if we open here, you see it starts constructing the query for us. And what do we want to grab? Well, each of these has a nodes property, and these are the actual uh, post that we get when we query um, the API. So inside the nodes, we have all of the posts and we could get, for example, the title of all of the posts. And now if we press play, we get this object return. So we get data.allstrappyPost.nodes and nodes is now an array of all of the, uh, all of the posts 
that are inside the Strapi CMS, and we're just querying the title, so that's what we get back here. We get the title for each post. If we wanted to, we could also add, say, the Strapi ID, right? So this would be the Strapi ID, and this should correspond with the Strapi ID here. So for example, ID one should be what are role-based permissions? And here we have it, what are role-based permissions? Strapi ID one. So we have all this information we can get and we can also get things like the content. So content, we have to dig through content.data. And if we wanna just get the raw content, we can do that as well. And so now we have it, here's the actual markup text that we put in and we can get it right back out here. Same thing for the next uh, the next post. So this is how we're able to construct queries, uh, GraphQL queries using this kind of uh, graphical um, playground. So let's uh, go back here and continue on our tutorial. So this just talks about how we can use it. Uh, here's a sample query, very similar to the one that we just created here. And it's return results, which we got, perfect, okay. Uh, next, we're going to be creating all of our pages. Okay, so for this section, it's mostly going to be a lot of cut and paste as I create each of these pages. So let's go over to our file browser here. And what we wanna do is we want to create inside of our pages folder. Uh, oh, sorry, no, we're gonna create a component first. Okay, so we're gonna create the layout component before we create um, the individual pages. So we're gonna create a new folder inside of our source folder called components. And then inside of here, we're going to create uh, two files, right? We're gonna create layout.js, and then we're also going to create layout.css. Perfect, okay, so that's what we're doing right here. And we're going to copy and paste all of this code into layout.js. So here we go, here we go. We've got all of this code here and we don't need these comments. So this is a layout component that we will be using and it is going to contain a header with a list of navigation links as well as a main element where the contents in, of the main element are passed in as children and it's gonna have a footer, right? So if we look at this real briefly, that's what we see. We see we have a header right, with some text in. We have this main section with a little bit of a header, a little bit of a yeah, H2 header, and then here we have children, so this is where the main content goes, right? And then we have a footer section. So that's basically the entire layout component right there. Uh, now, as we go through this, uh, the only thing that I really wanna point out right now is that there's this import statement here, import layout.css and it's actually missing from the text. So this code has to be added in. So let's do that here. Otherwise the layout CSS that we will put in here, it won't, it won't do anything. Uh, okay, great. So let's move on. And now we're going to create our actual, whoop, our actual uh, blog homepage. So now we're going to go to our pages folder and we're going to create uh, we're not going to create anything. We're going to overwrite the index.js. Okay, so here we are at index.js. We're going to select everything and delete it, right? So that's all this stuff. It's now gone. If I save this, well, it's still here for some reason. Let's, there we go. Yeah, oh, now it's gone. Okay. Uh, now let's copy and paste all of this code. Save that. And let's see if we reload. There we are. Okay, so we actually have uh, all of this code here is creating our homepage, our index.html. So this index.js gets built into an index.html file, and that's what we're loading up right here in our browser. And you can sort of see we have uh, the layout component, right? So the layout component that we just looked at has that header and uh, nav bar. And then we have, uh, as children, we have this uh, UL element, which is a list of all of the blog posts, which is what we see here. One, two, three, four, five, six different blog posts. And then we have the footer that was inside the layout component. So that's how this is working here. 
Perfect. Let's keep going. All right. Uh, now this is already running, so we don't have to worry about that. Now we want to create a single post page. Okay. What does this mean? Well, if we come here back to our home page and we click on this link, we get a 404 page. The reason why is because we haven't yet created the individual blog post pages. That's what we're going to do now. So what we want to do is we want to create a new file. Now this new file inside of our pages folder is going to have a funny name, right? As you can see, we're going to call it inside these, uh, and inside these brackets, strappy post.slug.js. That's a very strange name and it actually sort of acts as like a, a variable. It indicates that the actual pages here are going to be dynamically generated using the strappy post.slug information to uh, create all of these pages when Gatsby runs its build command. Um, but uh, we'll get into that later on. So right now we are now building this and what we want to do is copy and paste all of this content and now it should be working. So uh, if we click on this, what do we get? We actually get a page for this blog post. You can see here's all the content for the blog post. So it's working, right? If we look up at the URL, we can see that we're going to the slug that we generated inside of Strapi, right? So here we have the slug. Okay, it's not listed here, but it would be listed here, right? Here is the slug. So it's basically the title with all of the hyphens in it. And that's what we generated here. And we're using the slug to create the actual URL path to get to this individual page. And it's done dynamically well, by Gatsby. Same thing, we click here on the second one, we see the new slug over here. So that's pretty cool. We get that whole page. Uh, let's keep moving on. Uh, I believe we've done all of this. I'll go over this in more detail later about how it works, but yeah, it's working. So the remaining page we want to create is the category page. So we're going to do a similar thing that we just did with the post page, and we're going to create a new file for our pages. And we're going to call this inside of these brackets, strappy category dot slug dot JS. And we're going to now copy and paste in all of this code right here. And if this is working correctly, what we'll be able to do now is click on one of these category links. And now we have a new page. Notice the slug is AI. And this category page gives us a list of all the posts that are AI posts, right? So here we have all of the strappy posts and uh, it works. So this is really beautiful. We can go back to home. We could click here, the category link here and go to get into the strappy category page. So that is all of the pages created, right? Everything here is working. The only thing we have left is to add the styling. So let's go to layout.css. I'll copy and paste the styling here and beautiful. Okay, so the styling has been applied. All the CSS is here. This is the home page, And now we have little cards for all of our uh, blog posts. If we click on one of them, we have a slightly better styled blog post. It's not perfect, but better than what we had before. Okay, I think that covers all of the building that we need to do right now. We've set everything up. In the next video, I'm going to go into more detail about how these different um, pages and components actually work to give us what we just, what we see here in the Strappy Gatsby blog. So join me then and I'll see you real soon.